This is the Blackout Podcast. Hi and welcome to the Blackout Podcast with Israel and I get to talk with amazing people that do amazing things and today I'm so happy to have John Mann, someone I respect and Oh, a film, you. yeah, yeah, seriously, <laughs> a filmmaker that I respect. And I remember we actually kind of met the real, the actual first time we met was when we we're standing in the line festival. for Finn last yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, Drown the Lovers was playing with Missy that day. Yeah, yeah. my film Missy that was uh, 2018, just this last fall. Last yeah. fall, yeah, crazy. Um, so, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm originally from Fredericton, New Brunswick, and I grew up there till I was 17 and then went away to Acadia University in Wolfville, just down the road. Um, there I studied political science and always had kind of like this idea that after high school you go to university, even though like I had this kind of like love for film and writing and stories and books and novels and like was always just like devouring books and movies as a kid. Mm. Just never thought of it as like a legitimate um, career move, I guess, growing up in New Brunswick. And then like three quarters of the way through my degree at Acadia, I was just like, this is not for me at all. Mm -hmm. I need to like figure out a way to make movies and figure out a way to be a writer. And then my mom kind of told me to like put my money where my mouth was <laughs> and like, kind of call my bluff on it. Like she was like, it was like two months before graduation. She was like, all right, well then drop out. And I was like, no, like I can't drop out. Like, are you crazy? She's like, well then what? Like, stop complaining. Like it was a very like tough love kind of moment. She was like, I like movies too. Like big deal. Like do something about it. Mm. So then after Acadia, I studied screenwriting at the New York film Academy mm. and got into documentary filmmaking and then kind of slowly slid into starting to write short films with my writing partner. And that was about seven years ago now. And since then we've done completed, I've done a feature length documentary, a short documentary, three short films, post-production just wrapped on our fourth. And now I'm kind of getting into like the commercial kind of game. Yeah. And that's brought me to here. <laughs> well, man, that's a super, um, that's a super, how should I put it, introduction. So thanks for that. No, no <laughs> um, let's circle back to um, NY, uh, New, York New York Film, Film Academy. Yeah. 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 Uh, why did you decide to, I think you had other opportunities to learn different yep. things. Why did you pick screenwriting? Um, Honestly, I kind of fell into it in the way that I was looking at a bunch of... I didn't come out of Acadia with, like, the greatest marks. <laughs> so I was looking at... Um, but while I was there, I was actually working at a cafe that no one ever went to. So they allowed us to do our homework while we were working. Oh. So I just got to sit at a desk and do homework, which translated into me, like, writing short stories so by the time that I was applying for all these like masters, like fine arts and filmmaking and things like that, mm. I had, it was like a 42 page short story oh, wow. and I was able to send them that, which thankfully they cared more about the creative side of things than like the actual academic transcript. Mm. Um, so when I was applying to different film festivals, I applied to like international programs in Europe and I applied to... Tish at NYU and UCLA and USC and all these places and Ryerson and U of T and Vancouver Film School. Mm. And uh, I was lucky enough to get into these like super cool programs, but I couldn't afford it at all. And like there was no chance I was going to take out a hundred thousand dollar loan to go into a program with no guarantees, I guess. Mm. Um, it's not like I was going to med school where I would be. A doctor at the end of it yeah um so i kind of struck a deal with the new york film academy that i could do their screenwriting program abroad not abroad online mm. so and they were kind of like yeah it's screenwriting so all of your it's all on the computer anyway Pretty and much, like yeah. all of your homework is 
just through script writing and then that just super worked out for me and i went in there like as a really cocky 22 year old who <laughs> thought, thought he understood movies but then after the first year it was just like oh man i knew nothing mm. now i know like the tip of the iceberg of how to write and that was in 2013 and then ever since then it's just been like repetition on writing and writing and trying to make cool stuff and mm. uh and then um, a guy I went to Acadia with, Rob Ramsey, who was having some success as an actor at the time. Uh, I got to talking with him. He was on a show called Blue Mountain State, which ran oh, for three yeah. seasons on Spike. And then they did a movie on uh, that was actually at the top of iTunes for the for a month in back in February 2017. Like super successful show, has a huge following. Mm. He gets stopped like everywhere we go. <laughs> and I reached out to him, that short story that I wrote at Acadia, mm. I then turned that into my thesis at the New York Film Academy. So I turned it into a 120 page feature. And I sent that to Rob and he was like, oh, that's not too bad, blah, blah, blah. He's like, mm. we just started talking, like bouncing ideas off of each other. And then I wrote, a TV pilot and sent it to Rob at like, just kind of like, do you want to help me write this? And then that's was 2012. And like, that's how it all kind of began. And then he and I have written, um, we both produced Missy. I wrote and directed it and he starred in it, uh, Missy and the mannequin. And then uh, another film that screened at Finn that year that we met was cahoots. And, mm -hmm. uh, he stars in that we produced that together. And we also co-wrote um, a television pilot called Wolfville that got into the uh, National Screen Institute's Totally Television program last yeah, year, yeah. which we won that, the 2018 program, which is awesome. And then, um, yeah, so that's kind of how it all got started. And now Rob and I are just kind of enjoying some success that way and uh, just having a ton of fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Rob, did he study film in Acadia or? He studied theater. Oh, yeah, okay, Rob studied okay. theater and um, he, he was, uh, we lived in the same floor in our residence and he was like, he was a huge deal at that time. Like he, his summer jobs when I was going to work in a cafe and people were going to work for like the city of Fredericton, Rob was going to do like Disney shows. <laughs> Kind of thing. So he'd come back and I was like always pretty intimidated by him. And then um just on like we weren't super close when we were at Acadia. And then mm -hmm. just on a whim, I sent him this script because he was the only person I knew who would be able to give me any kind of feedback. And he was mm -hmm. living in LA at the time. And uh yeah, it was just kind of like I don't know, I must have caught him on a good day. And he was just <laughs> like, Yeah, I'll work with you. And then ever since it's been it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, how did, so first you send him the uh, script. Yeah. He gives you notes and then you guys decide, yeah, you know, this is my work. Let's start writing yeah. together. How did you now get him to actually act in one of your films? So then that was, so we started working on that pilot a long time ago. And um, we didn't know what to do with it mm. when we were done. Uh, so then we were like... No one's going to give us jobs. We've never done anything. Well, Rob was getting like acting jobs and stuff, but we were like, we want to produce something. So let's look for something to produce. And then we realized like very quickly that no one's just going to give us something. We had never done anything before. Mm. So then we wrote a short film together. Um, Rob always had this really cool idea that he wanted to do a short film with no dialogue. And I always had the idea of doing a short film about someone who commits a hit and run and then it just follows them for like the 24 hours after and like the guilt and all that mm. kind of shit that you'd go through. So we combined those two stories and we made a short called Rear View in 2016. And it was seven minutes, 11 minutes, 11, 11. That's weird. Three of my four films have been 11 minutes and 11 seconds. <laughs> just completely. Which ones? For no reason. Um, Cahoots, Rear View, and now Popsy. Popsy, oh. I kind of like leaned into it. It was like 11 minutes and 16 seconds. And I was like, like okay, I can make <laughs> this. Look for the five yeah, seconds. I, can make, I can get rid of five <laughs> seconds somewhere. Um, so then we did that. Yeah, we did Rear View. We filmed it here for nothing. Mm. Like bought people coffee and Subway for lunch kind of thing. Mm. And of course, like Rob's a great actor. So we always had that in our back pocket. And that was my first opportunity to really like direct a narrative film. 
And our goal was like, okay, let's get it into 10 festivals. Like no idea where we picked that number out of. Like, I don't know how we came out with that number, mm. but then for whatever reason, it got into 27. Nice. And we think, we think, and we didn't, <laughs> we didn't have any kind of strategy for it. But um, we think it played well in European festivals because there's no dialogue. Ah. So if they needed North American films, it was a very easy, like, 11-minute piece that they could yeah. show. Yeah. And um, I haven't watched it in a few years, and I'm definitely not planning on watching it Why anytime not? soon. Well, just because it's, like, old art. <laughs> it was the first thing I'd ever done. And, I mean, it's it's fine. I'm proud of it. I think it's a super cool story. And we were able to weave in like we went through like the seven uh like the seven stages of death like of like grieving with this guy like mm -hmm. very subtly and like cool i think it was really like super cool project and it was able to then give us it created our resume mm -hmm. as like writers producers mm -hmm. myself as a director and um it was kind of nice to be able to then when we started to send out scripts we'd say like Here's our script, but and also here's a link. We did this thing. It got yeah. into a bunch of festivals. Yeah. And then a couple of years went by, and Rob and I quickly realized that we like hadn't done anything in a couple <laughs> of years other than we wrote a ton. Like we wrote probably three or four pilots, including Wolf Hill, which then got into NSI. Mm. And then um so we were like, we have to make a short again, like we have to do something. Like, let's make our calling card short film. Like, we'll make something that we're really, really proud of. Um, at the time, I was working at a sports science company where I was doing all of their video production. So, like, my directing skills and my production skills, producing skills and editing skills got a little bit better since Rearview. And mm. it just felt like kind of the right time. So, we started bouncing around ideas of, like, how can we make the, I don't want to say cheap, but, like, most inexpensive film possible mm. and like we have rob as an actor so then we were like well okay what if it's like a last man on earth type situation we can film it at my family cottage which we did end up doing with missy and it was in november so the cottage was like boarded up for the season look super creepy all the leaves are dead all the uh houses on that row of the beach were obviously deserted for the year and um so then we were starting to talk about, okay, last man on earth, maybe he gets like letters and we don't understand where these letters are coming from and blah, blah, blah. And then it re and then it eventually ended up to being like, okay, well, what if he has a mannequin that he talks to, mm. to kind of push the story forward? And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Um, but I don't want it to turn into like a Wilson volleyball from Castaway where it's just so <laughs> obvious for like exposition of like, no, Wilson, we can't leave until the tide comes in, like stuff like that. So <laughs> like explaining science. So yeah. it kind of just like ended up being this thing of, okay, let's not use the mannequin for exposition. Let's just like use the mannequin as a character. And I tried to write her as like, as if she was actually there. And in the mm. script, in some parts, she does have dialogue, which is weird, but that really helped with the editing of the film. Mm. So, yeah, great. We'll do that Remembrance Day weekend, uh, 2017, I think it was. And then... Um, How many people worked on with you on that film? Um, like six. But then there was one day... It was super cold that weekend. <laughs> like, there, this isn't a spoiler, but like Rob gets into the lake yeah. at, at one point. And it was like minus 11 that day. He's crazy. That guy. I know, and we kept saying, like, Rob, you don't have to do this. It's not <laughs> worth it. It's a short film. Like, we'll figure out something else. But he was just such a trooper about it. Um, so, like, on day one, there's... He does it nude, by the way. Oh, yeah. 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 Holy smokes. I know. Yeah. So, by the time this comes out, like, Rob's ass will be on CBC, basically. <laughs> um, no, he... Yeah, he crushes it in Missy. And, like, obviously, like, it wasn't an easy role when it's just him and mm. this, like, mannequin with a creepy face kind of thing. So on the first day, there was about six when it was minus 10. And then the next day, there was four people. And then by day three, it was literally Rob, myself, and Paul McCurdy. Mm. So it was literally like the camera operator, me, the director, and Rob. We didn't have a sound guy on mm. Missy. 
until well, post. Oh, wait, wait. so yeah. you re- recorded the sound? Yeah, we had a lav mic on Rob mm. uh, for most of filming. And mm. then at some points, like the dinner scene at, at the end, it's kind of like hidden on the table. It sounded atrocious mm. until I sent it to this guy, Bruce Legro in Fredericton, who was just a wizard and was able to make it sound as good as it sounds. And mm. um, that same weekend, Rob the Go Getter was like, "Okay, I'm flying in Wednesday. We'll sh- or I'm flying in Thursday night. We'll shoot Saturday, Sunday, Monday because it's a long weekend, and then he'll hop on a flight back to Toronto Monday night." And he was like, "That leaves all day Friday. Can we write something that?" can shoot in one location with one guy or mo- like whatever one couple buddies mm-hmm. at a table or whatever and uh then we'll have two shorts that weekend which is like super optimistic i didn't realize <laughs> how hard it was going to be yeah. until we were actually doing it um so so wait the weekend you show up missy you showed this like we shot the hoots as well holy and so Cahoots started out as like, okay, let's, and it, Cahoots was very much going to be like, if this isn't good, let's not do anything with it. We can bury it, but at least we tried and it'll give us like a little bit more experience on like writing and directing and what producing and what you have to do. Mm. So we started shooting ideas, uh, Rob, myself, and this guy, Mike Corby, who's been a childhood friend of mine forever. Since childhood, I guess. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so we just started like pitching ideas back and forth of like what would be a situation that we can film in one room with three guys. And originally it was going to be like Rob, Mike and John mm. in it. And because just to like save costs and like save time, I was just going to start in it as well, which I was dreading. And started pitching around ideas like what if two guys wake up in a living room where they don't know where they are and then a guy comes in and they're so hungover and whatever we're like well that's actually like literally the hangover (laughs) so we're not gonna do that we're staying away from that and never wanted it to be like super Mm bro-y um we wanted at like the end of the day we wanted to make sure it had a lot of heart in it so it was that we were sitting around talking about like what's the worst thing a friend could tell you Mm. and like would we be able to twist that so someone had the idea of like, wouldn't it be terrible if like your friend told you that he joined ISIS? And we were like, <laughs> yeah, that would be literally probably the worst thing you could hear, but maybe that's too harsh. So what if he is hired by them to do their social media? <laughs> and then that's like, that's where the idea of cahoots came. And then we were like, okay, well, we can call in favors. We can shoot it at a bar in Fredericton mm. for super cheap. Actually, we called in a favor, so we actually got the location for free. The bar nice. stayed open the whole time. We Holy had to bag smokes. them to like keep the music off. Oh man! We shot from. How was sound? It was good because it was Bruce again, and Bruce is a wizard with oh, sound. Okay. And um, we went from like nine a.m. until about. Th- they gave us until three o'clock because it was the Friday of a long weekend, and he, they were uh-huh. like, "We're gonna have a huge rush, and we need to have music on." Here we go. And honestly, up until about one thirty. That day, I was like, "This is I'm wasting everyone's time here. This is going nowhere. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it became like while I was editing Missy, and if I would go crazy editing Missy, I would take a break and edit Cahoots. Mm. And then there was a few times that I was like texting with Rob back and forth being like, yeah, yeah, yeah Missy's great, but Cahoots might actually be like the better of the two Mm. and then it was always just kind of like a sidebar like yeah yeah we'll put it into a bunch of comedy festivals and stuff and then um it got picked up it screened at atlantic film fest that same year as missy and then it won uh best film at the canadian international comedy film festival in edmonton so like it did become it did kind of yeah take a life of its own after a while and it just became this like not throw away, but it was like, hey, we have an extra day. Paul McCurdy will be in town because he's in town for Missy. So mm. we were like, let's try and film two shorts in one weekend. And we did somehow. Holy shit. And how was the editing process? For the um, long. <laughs> Missy, Missy especially. <laughs> like, Missy was, 
was kind of it was it was weird to be editing them at the same time. Mm. I think it worked. I think it worked out in a good way because like editing comedy is so much different than editing drama. Yeah. And there was a lot of times that I was like, "Is Missy moving too fast, or is Missy moving too slow?" So then I would start to speed that project up, and then just something would be off, or then I would go to cahoots. And I got really lucky. I was able to start um, going back and forth with this guy. His name's Spencer Porter. And he wrote on Family Guy for five seasons and started out as Seth MacFarlane's like personal assistant. And he has two or three written by credits on Family Guy. And I was nice. sending him cuts of cahoots. And he just kept being like, faster, faster, faster. <laughs> it has to be faster. Comedy is quick. Comedy is quick. Unless the joke is the awkward silence, don't have silences. So, like, using that um, was super helpful. Having him was really helpful. Mm. And then that, as soon as he said, like, comedy is quick, I was able to just be like, okay, Cahoots is quick. Missy can be slow. Let's slow it down. Let's make these, like, let's really squeeze the moments out here. And, like, mm. and Rob was just so great in both of them. And the guy, Mike Corby, who was in on kind of the writing process of Cahoots, he plays, he's in cahoots he's one of the actors at the table in cahoots and then um the waiter sean was just just a buddy who said that he had done some theater in high school and he's the only person i've ever auditioned because i've always had rob so, like, <laughs> so then sean like showed some interest and then i filmed him on my iphone and rewatched it and he was super funny and showed up and was like really professional and was like ad-libbing some great lines that made it into the final cut and mm. cahoots just like really kind of came together somehow like everything just sort of lined up for it yeah and then uh missy was much more of a like gut-wrenching like body shot like death by a thousand cuts like it was like kind of a grind mm. and then um and then yeah probably about eight months or so ago we got an email from cbc's like short film distribution um and they had gotten a hold of missy and they asked if we'd be interested in them purchasing the film to be able to screen with canadian reflections so that's Sweet. coming up on may 16th or i guess it would have now already happened may 16th yeah. um so that's playing coming up this week which was uh i mean super cool and like i've never had that kind of exposure for any of my films and then it will uh then live on cbc gem for the next three years which is that super cool that's dope yeah that's dope um so how did you feel when you had that news um it was weird it, we i was in toronto with rob and i was going to meet him for a beer at the end of work day somewhere and he I got there and he was like, did you see this email? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then we were so like, not weirded out by it, but kind of like, like this is, this is, we thought they wanted us to pay them. Oh, mm. sorry. They wanted us. We thought we were like, oh, they want us to pay them to put it on. It. And we were like, let's mm. get like, we need a lawyer to read this. Cause we don't know what we're looking at. <laughs> And we were kind of like, oh, if, if we have to pay that, like, okay, like, that could be cool. We'll get, like, a ton of views, and that'd be good, and that's a nice compliment from CBC. Mm. So we weren't even thinking Is that, that it around? was the other way around. We were So we were just kind of, like, shocked and super pleased and, uh, like, very thankful, I guess, like, <laughs> <laughs> to the point where we were, like, kind of entertaining the idea about paying them to show it. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so, and, uh, so here's the thing though popular demand pictures mm -hmm. is it different from 7 8 yeah no 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 it's all the same oh, okay. so yeah so the 7 8 I get questions about the logo mm. quite a bit which isn't like I, I always feel like I'm always like shit I like the logo is confusing like no, I don't <laughs> I don't feel like there's this grand like no big story behind it that people then get it I just chose like popular demand seven eighths is a majority so it's like seven eighths of people oh, so it's like a popular demand, gotcha, demand gotcha, thing gotcha. and i looked at like two thirds and it didn't look cool and like <laughs> four fifths and it didn't look cool and then seven eighths i was like oh okay okay and then um the name 
I was kind of, and this was when I was going through, I was making a documentary at the time and I needed a tax number. Mm. And um, so I needed to like incorporate and I was listening to a song and then the opening lyric was back by popular demand. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And I was like feeling like a cocky 22 year old or something. And I just chose that. And it's long. I realize that now. Like <laughs> my email is John at popular demand pictures. And I have to like P O P U L A R like when I'm giving it to people, but I like the name. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. And how do you find, Oh, actually, before I get to this one, let's go back to NSI. Sure. Yeah. Um, you did Missy mm -hmm. and all that stuff shot it. And then yeah. you've been writing all this pilots for a while. Why did you decide to go with Wooville? Um, so we had written two or three and it came down to a list of two of ours that we were like, so this would have been it. We shot Cahoots and Missy in November, 2017. Mm -hmm. So in about June of 2017. So a few months earlier, we were like, we were at that point where we were like, we haven't done anything in a couple of years. We've just been writing and we have no idea if any of this is any good. Like, are we in the right direction or, or is it time to like, Oh, we tried. It's over. Move <laughs> on kind of thing. And, yeah. um, so we were looking at Wolfville and we got an email. It was like the NSI newsletter because Rearview had screened in the online NSI online film festival. And so we got the newsletter and it was like, we're now accepting scripts from writer producer teams. Mm. And I was just like, why don't we, it's like 50 bucks. This will give us the answer if we're any good or not. Mm. And, um, then a few months later, I got a call from Rob and he was like, do you remember that NSI thing we applied to? And I was honestly like, no, I don't remember. Like, <laughs> cause Rob typically like producer Rob handles all the like applications we do. Mm. And, um, that is just like not how my brain works at all. Yeah. And, uh, he's really good at that stuff. So, um, I was like, no, he's like, remember like the totally television with Wolf. I was like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, we got shortlisted. Mm. So we were in the top seven or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, I was like, cool, that's awesome. Like, what does that mean? And so then we had a video interview with the two heads of the program. And um, we just approached it as a very like. Wait, were you guys in different cities? Yeah, Rob was in Toronto yeah. and I was here. I was oh, in so all online. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's how we did the majority of our right. Honestly, that's how we do all of our writing and all of our communication is usually by like FaceTime or emails or texts and yeah. phone calls. And um, so we did the video interview and they were at NSI, like in Winnipeg. That's where mm -hmm. they are. So two people in Winnipeg, Rob in Toronto, myself in Halifax. And we went into that conversation as very just like aw shucks about it like we are here to learn teach us whatever you can teach us mm. we are like completely green we want to know what we can do and like wolf Phil is just very much our like kind of like our raw skills yeah. put onto paper kind of thing mm. and then like two weeks after that we got the call that we were in the top three so we were invited to uh, Toronto for a one week workshop in September, 2018. Mm. So, or 2017, sorry. And that would have been about two months before we filmed Cahoots and Missy. So things got super busy in those three months. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so that week we met with a bunch of like writers and producers who have been in the Canadian industry forever. And we met a bunch of head, like, heads of broadcasting and heads of development at broadcasters, sorry. And, um, just learned a ton in that week. And then the three teams that were there, it was ourselves, a team from Vancouver and a team from Yellowknife. Mm. And we were all told we had to like apply the notes that we were given that week. And then we had to reapply our scripts at Christmas. Mm. So we were writing cahoots and Missy rewriting Wolfville, shooting Coots and Missy. And then we uh, reapplied on Christmas Eve Holy of smokes. 2018. That's a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was. It's like, it is work for mm. sure. Um, 
and it's not always fun as you know like, right it's not the best <laughs> it's a fun job but like even to uh to get to where i i just think that there's like a lot more work that goes into it than people mm. maybe realize they see like the finished projects kind of thing but yeah. there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and um like missy 17 minutes long it was like an 18 month project mm. kind of thing so we reapplied wolf Hill on christmas eve and then a month later we found out that we were they invited back the top two teams the two winners mm. kind of thing um so then we went back to a second um they call them boot camps so like a second boot camp in toronto where we met more industry people and then that week was all kind of based around pitching like how to pitch the project now that it's like polished and written yeah. Ago, yeah and um that week we met uh two of the guest speakers that were brought in were alan hocko and alex patrick and they are at take the shot productions in newfoundland mm. so they did alan created starred in and wrote republic of doyle for six seasons on cbc they just wrapped second season of caught on cbc they also produced frontier with jason momoa on netflix mm. so they were brought in to be guest speakers and i was actually late coming into the room i was late which is super embarrassing and rob and um alex patrick was like already on the screen because it was a video conference mm. and rob who's just like so good at shooting the shit with people was just like talking to him <laughs> and i was lucky that alan was also late so like I wasn't technically late because mm. the guest speaker was late. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, he was just like, so what's Wolfville about? And those, they're like East Coast guys. All their production comes out of Newfoundland. So mm. we were saying like it's in Nova Scotia and it's about this like small town and a cop and his best friend who's a drug dealer. And they're just like, oh, like we'd love to read that when you guys feel comfortable with it. And then they stuck around and chatted for about an hour like – just telling us about like um, kind of start to finish how Republic of Doyle went and how caught went and like that process. Mm. And so Rob and I left that meeting being like, okay, those are the guys like, that's who we want to partner with. And they were just like speaking our language kind of thing. <clears throat> and then we spent after that boot camp, which was in March, we spent about three weeks and then emailed Alex and was like, Hey, mm. we think Wolf Hill is ready for you to see. And we gave it to them, and then about a week later, they called us back and said that they were really interested in optioning the script. Oh, smokes. So then, since then, that was coming up on a year ago. So in, like, June, July of last year, we signed an option agreement with them. And then this whole fall, winter, we spent rewriting with uh, Alan and a woman named Jane Meggs and... Um, yeah, so Wolf Hill just, like, continues to evolve into this polished kind of script that we're hoping to How many have people see. episodes did you guys get to write? We just have the pilot. Shit. Yeah, so we have, like, I know. It's, like, it's, it's weird, and that's something that I'm still learning every day is, like, how television works. And, like, I don't obviously don't have a ton of experience because I literally haven't worked in it yet. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's all, it's all the pilot. It's all the work and something like early on that I was told, which was like kind of took it to heart was like, we would say, yeah, like in the second scene, this happens and that'll pay off in episode three and like, oh, we have this great idea for episode five and blah, blah, blah. And I forget who it was in the program. They were like, all you have is a pilot. <laughs> so like put it in the pilot, like make the pilot awesome. Don't like... Yeah. You have to bait people into wanting to read more, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, you got to make your pilot as fucking cool as possible. Talking about pilots, right, of all the shows you've seen, which pilot kind of stuck to with you? Uh, the Breaking Bad pilot is pretty crazy. Just as far as, like, you already start to see an arc in uh, the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, at the start, it's like, excuse me for being crude, but it happens in the show. His wife's like giving him a hand job while she's on her computer. <laughs> and then, and it's his birthday and it's just like sad and his, his students don't respect him. And like, they his see him boss. at the car wash yeah. and then he kind of, and then he finds out that he has cancer and then he's like shopping with his son and someone makes fun of his son and he, he just snaps. 
And then the episode ends with him like having sex with his wife. Yeah. So it's just like those are two very like physical moments of an arc that are just like super good mm. that are like just set up the entire show really um and it like and because it's his birthday it introduces him to like everyone in his immediate like family and friends and um yeah that's just like a really really great pilot yeah ozark recently was really good like to set up that show uh embarrassingly they everyone says to always watch apparently the pilot for cheers is like the greatest written pilot of all time and i've never seen it me neither yeah everybody says that me neither yeah, i'm like no. i'll see it sometime yeah <laughs> do you know another one like the the pilot for lost yeah like lost the show oh yeah yeah I most expensive pilot of all time yeah i mean yeah i, I, I don't know point. i like what's his name the main guy jj abrams yeah, he's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> I remember seeing that show. I'm like, okay, why are they going with this? And I mean, I love the show. I know there are people that didn't like how it ended, but I, mm -hmm. I still love that show. Yeah. And it's great that you brought up Ozark because that one, of all the shows recently, mm -hmm. that one, the writing that show just yeah. stuck with me. And I think in my mind, I can't, you know, Jason, you expect mm -hmm. to laugh and stuff. And this guy. Is... And it's interesting too because he's still the same bateman character that he plays in everything but all of a sudden he's like i know i think it was, he can just like talk himself out of any situation <laughs> in anything he's in he's just like such a guy next door kind of thing yeah and it just works for him he's like one of the coolest guys ever yeah and um yeah ozark uh mind hunter that was another show that one, yeah too. that was one that i i'm a huge huge david fincher fan i think he's oh. like the greatest of all time so <laughs> When that show came out, I was just like hooked immediately. That was a show like Mindhunter and Ozark were shows that I finished in like two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Uh, when 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 the new season for Ozark came, mm -hmm. I remember I was at, at a friend's place and I just I just landed at their house and I watched it through the night and I finished it the full oh, day. Wow. And I did I felt like it's super bad friend. Oh really? <laughs> like yeah. I'm, season two? Yeah, yeah yeah. I just went through the night and then in the morning I finished it. Then we could yeah. hang out. <laughs> but like it's a really good show. Uh I wanna talk about Popsy but before we mm -hmm. do you gave me the trailer so we're just gonna play it now and then sure, we'll yeah. come back to talk awesome. about it. boy holy shit popsy i mean <laughs> you know what I, I i i remember you sent me a preview cup i can't talk about it right well i mean that's that's a weird thing about like i've never adapted anything before mm. and in the back of my mind i'm always like well fuck like the book came out in 1993 <laughs> so like it's not even like There's spoiler, no spoiler yeah it's not even spoiler <laughs> alerts it's like it's a great short story. Go read it. Well, be, <laughs> before we talk about that, right? So Stephen King. The yeah. thing when I remember we had we met a couple of uh, months ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, talked yeah. about the films that we had in the festival. I was like, hey, read this thing, and then, you mm -hmm. know, we just struck that friendship. And I remember you telling me about this thing, and then I started reading up on it, mm -hmm. and I found out that like the reason why The Walking Dead is very good mm -hmm. was, was was very good. good. Yeah, was because of Frank Darabont. Mm -hmm. and and then i found out that he also shawshank exactly yeah he and yeah. shawshank happened because he made one of these one dollar films oh really yeah i didn't know that yeah That's and then crazy. he made shawshank and then he made walking dead and he made one of the craziest endings i've seen in a film and it was a stephen king film too the mist oh yeah that's an awesome ending dying ding it's in the, so good in the in film, film, not the book. Not the one that was yeah. filmed here. But like, oh, no, no, like the film. Oh, Jesus. I'm yeah. not seeing the series. I'm yeah. not seeing the series. Like I in the movie. Yeah. That ending is Isn't that crazy? so good. I know. And the movie's okay, but the ending, uh, can we, we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, so, okay, basically it's this mist and you kind of get the idea that there's a monster in the mist that mm. comes into this small northeast town like any Stephen King movie. And mm. um, so anyway, it's this guy ends up being alone in his car with yeah, his yeah. two kids. Yeah. And he has two bullets and a gun. 
and they start to hear this like crazy roaring noise that you associate with the monster at this point. So he makes the decision to shoot both of his kids so that he can be, he can face the monster and die that way. I guess that's his thinking. Mm. So he shoots both. I'm getting chills talking about it. Literally. <laughs> I just got yeah. goosebumps. Yeah. So he literally shoots his kids and then the noise gets closer and closer and it's the fucking army. And it's this, the, the fucking day is army. saved. Holy, yeah. Like, I remember, you know what? And I he remember, just breaks down crying in the middle of the highway kind of thing. And yeah. the movie ends. Uh, man, that ending is so perfect. So uncomfortable. Like, it's so good. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, and then you said you were doing this. I was like, holy shit. I read the story. I remember saying, we talked on the phone. I'm saying, how are you going to do the monster? You did a great, oh, thank great, you. great job. Thanks. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah it's um <laughs> it's a really good film thank you it's it was weird like adapting stuff mm. and i am such like he is my stephen king is like my literary idol and he's so cool anyone who chirps him says like oh yeah he's horror he's so much more than that like he did shawshank first of all like and everyone, everyone's like, what's your favorite? Or like, if they tell me their favorite movie is Shawshank, I'm like, do you know that that was like a novella by Stephen King? And a lot of people don't know that. But he's the coolest. My mom introduced me to Stephen King at like a super young age. <laughs> and um, Your mom is responsible for a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> definitely, she is like the reader writer in the family. And mm. just like, if she last year was her first year of retirement. She read 93 books. And this oh, year she's wow. going for a hundred. Like you can't buy her books because she's read them. Like she's already read them. And she gave me. I read. I read The Shining in grade seven, and I read It in grade eight. So like at the age of like those kids in It, mm. and though that book especially, like kids in a small town in Maine and being a kid from a small town in New Brunswick kind of thing. Like yeah. it was very. Just, like, could see a lot of those kids and myself and my friends and, like, thinking of Stephen King, like, as a kid and trying to read as much of his stuff as possible leading mm -hmm. up to Popsy. And um, he, I just tried to kind of capture, like, not just Popsy, mm -hmm. but the Stephen King universe that he has created, especially over the last couple of years with, like, it and that show he did with J.J. Abrams, Castle Rock and, yeah. like... He does have a very, he also has a really specific like sense of humor. And, <laughs> He's funny, yeah, actually. He I is. read, there's this book, I, is it on writing? But like he has a book about writing. I can't remember the title. You should read it. You it's, said it's not on writing? No, like, like I can't remember if that's the title. There is a title, there is a book called On Writing. And By it's, him? Yeah, and it's basically, Jenny, it's this like book, his life story, basically. It's, yeah. It's really, really, yeah, really it's good. Awesome. He, he, he gets hit by a car. Yeah. And then if you read that section, it's like, who is this person? Yeah. Like, it's a very interesting Yeah, line. and All like right. talking about how he wrote Misery. Like, he did, he, that guy has seen some stuff. Like, his brother, he watched his brother get hit by a train mm. as a kid. And then you're like, oh, The Body. Like, the movie The Body, Stand, or Stand By Me, is based off of his short story, The Body, which is about kids trying to find a kid they went to school with who got hit by a train. It's like, okay. <laughs> and then... Him talking about misery, which is like a writer is in a car accident and is saved by this woman who ends up being an absolute psychopath. Fucking sick person. And he ends up killing her with the typewriter. And then in On Writing, he talks about how that she represents his drug addiction. Mm. And then it's like, oh, he literally killed her with the typewriter. Like, that's how he got through it was with writing because... From what I've, I'm not speaking for him, but from what I've heard and read that he, after Carrie came out, which was his first novel he, he just published, like, yeah. he just like, what am I going to do? And he was really scared that he wasn't going to be able to write while not drinking. Mm. And then drinking led to cocaine so that he could like stay up all night and write. And That book was great. Yeah. That book was great. I have fun. So of all the, of all the stories I can choose, why did you pick Popsy? Um, so... Popsy, there's a few ideas I've had about it, I guess. One is that it's a very limited cast, and I have Rob. <laughs> like, <laughs> so um, so that was helpful. Yeah. And then um, also I had just worked with this child actor, Avery. And He's good. He is good. And there's a, there's a... 
there's a scene where he just stands and then when he kind of meets Popsy, I'm looking at this kid, I'm like, oh man, he Outside has a the future. Mall, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's good. Like, I, he has a future of acting. Yeah, he was in a short film called Wildfire that mm. I worked on very, like I was a productionist co- coordinator on it. And um, so I was on set with this kid and I was just like, oh man. And at the time I had popsy i was writing it to submit it to mm. like writing the adaption to submit it to try and get uh the rights to it mm. and he i originally had it written as a little i was going to switch it from the short story from a little boy to a little girl oh and then when i saw avery act which was that was wildfire was his first acting experience mm. i mentioned it to his dad on the draw we filmed it in um windsor and on the drive back to halifax one night I was like, do you think this is something that Avery's interested in? Because I'm working on something that he would be awesome. And that was one thing that I told his parents was like, your son is going to have, a, he's going to go as far as he wants to. Like, it's up to him because yeah, he yeah. has, like, the ability and the talent. So I had Rob and I had and Avery. this shouldn't matter, but he also has the looks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does. I know. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> it shouldn't matter, but yeah. he does. And then we, um, so I had Rob and I had Avery and it's funny because like if my mom was here and as soon as Stephen King comes up, she for my whole life has always said he has this one short story. And at the end, the kid just keeps crying for his grandfather, crying for Popsy. And then at the end, like a bat lands on the van and it's like the kid screams Popsy. And my mom always just got like the biggest kick out of that ending. <laughs> and so it's always just like been in the back of my head. And then when I saw that it was available... I was like, oh, like this <laughs> this isn't too bad. It's it's um there's a mall scene mm. and there's driving in a car and there's a highway scene. Like mm. three scenes, two actors, everything else can kind of be like the cherries on top. Yeah. And um I made the decision to like cut kind of a lot of the exposition into who like Rob's character. There was this whole gambling thing that mm. I just didn't think would it would make it really kind of uh just kind of messy as far as a short film goes. So mm. I thought that it would like the, the abduction aspect of it would translate really well to film. So that's what we decided to do. And I've always had this, like, I was always really worried that, or like what I've seen in a lot of like first time short films and stuff is that the writing's great. You can tell the director is like going to do big things, but then, sometimes they might bite off more than they could chew and over just like go to the like cross the line where I think that it's really important to just like get as close to the line as possible and not cross it yeah so as far as like how we were going to do the monster like Mm. you brought up where in the book it's like this big winged creature that lands on top of a moving van we just kind of used some movie magic and were able to hopefully get this like cool, yeah, no, creepy. It, it worked. Awesome. How? What made you the the credits? Is you know what? To me, like I always struggle with the ending of my films. Yeah. So with the with the adaptation, you kind of have the film written mm-hmm. out for you pretty mm-hmm. much. But the ending you chose mm-hmm. and the title, like yeah, yeah. what was behind that? That's that is. It, it's my favorite thing in the film. Cool. It's mine too. <laughs> yeah. And that took a lot of convincing on the day. We shot that at night and it was Rob's, it was Rob's last scene. And we were still, that was shot on like a Saturday night and we still had a full day on Sunday. And it was like 1230 at night and Rob and everybody was like tired and whatever. We had a long day that day. We still had to get up the next morning, mm. but I just had this idea for what you're talking about. Mm. And we had a great script supervisor, great sound person, great cinematographer, Jack Leahy. He's Jack from Halifax. Sh- He's fucking awesome. Jack is, yeah. Yeah. I tell him all the time he doesn't realize how good he is. Like, yeah, he and he's to, so humble too. I know, it's like, it's crazy. Oh, you know, he's always thinking of the next way to make that show better than yeah. it was last yeah. time. Yeah. I was, that's who I was in Fredericton with. We were shooting together this week oh, again. Okay. And, um, they kept all kind of like they were doing their jobs. They're like, are you sure you want to do it this way? Like, I don't know. This is really not, I guess, bold. And, um, I was just like, yep. Mm. Yeah. We're doing it. Like, should we get more coverage? Like, I don't want to say too much, but like, should we get more coverage or should we, 
whatever. And then um, originally the idea, all my films, like I want to end them. I'm big on like recency effect. So like how a film ends should be like how people feel leaving the theater after watching it or like what they talk about on the drive home sort of thing. Mm. So I always usually always usually have a song in my head that's going to go into the credits so in cahoots it's like this upbeat french song that's super like it's goofy kind of thing and then the end of missy there's like an old song by the mamas and the papas that play and so at the end of rear view there's an old 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 song playing and like they kind of encapsulate the film in a way that you wouldn't necessarily think that they do mm. Um, not quite the way that Tarantino does it. I think Scorsese is really good with his music. So I've always kind of like, kind of watched out for his stuff, but, um, <laughs> the music in Shutter Island is great. <laughs> yeah. Shutter Island, uh, like, um, the departed has a great soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Wolf of wall street has a great soundtrack. And, um, but, um, so with the, I had a song in mind mm. and I was like, Oh, this shot would be so weird with this song playing and like the credits scrolling. Mm. But then I watched it and I was like, oh, the song doesn't match like the language of the film at all. Mm. And I was super disappointed. So then I like deleted it from the timeline and the movie kept playing. And it was just like you could hear crickets and like dogs in the distance. And you are just like left to stare at what you're left to stare at. And I was like, oh, that's super uncomfortable too yeah and so i'm glad to hear that it worked <laughs> yo no that's my favorite for like i like i love the movie i love how this kind of a switch there was a guy like yeah yeah like the, the guy, grandfather kind of like, role okay, yeah, yeah that Grandpa. guy maybe yeah and then you know and then you see the thing move forward and then it happens and then all mm -hmm. that drama happens and then rob is being robbed and yeah. then that kid does his thing and the have this thing in the car and then that ending just took everything and, awesome like oh super man happy that. i love yeah. that I, actually i don't think i've told you that but yeah that is i can't wait for people to see that yeah me neither. i'm gonna end with this so, so you've done this popular demand is doing commercials now mm -hmm. you just came back from new brunswick what's next um that's a great question now well like what you just said i gotta get to find a way for people to see popsy so that's like <laughs> that's always that's always like it's funny, there's always something to worry about. Mm. And like getting Popsy done was the last thing to worry about. And now it's like, great, it's done. How do people see it? Mm. So, uh, well, what's next, I guess, is the screening of Missy coming up, which is awesome. And then trying to figure out how people can see Popsy, whether that's like the festival route or we do like an online kind of uh, premiere for it or what, just need to do some time thinking about that. Um, we'll fill is still we're pitching right now trying to find a broadcaster for that so that's great uh popular demand we just did something for the nursing faculty at umb we recently shot a commercial spot for immigration new brunswick um yeah things are busy so i'll be editing a lot coming up and hopefully getting popsy out there yeah, no, I can't wait for I can't wait for other people to see Popsy. Thanks for sending me yeah, that no advance problem. copy and thanks for coming on. I can't wait to have you back on after Popsy has played because sure, I want to yeah. hear what people are saying. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, dude. This is the Blackout Podcast. for listening.